Warning, this podcast contains comets. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SCN on TV podcast for Supergirl, Season 2, Episode 10, We Can Be Heroes. I'm yours, Dom. With me, we have Nikki, Cleo, and Rachel. How's it going? Good. How are you? Can you be heroes for just one day? No. <laughs> we cannot be heroes. They can. Eh. <laughs> I think that's bullshit. <laughs> mm-hmm. It is. Sorry. I love you, Kara. You're wrong. Mm-hmm. Objectively, you're wrong. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe a little bit. Um, but Monel finally confessed his love for Kara, and I'm so happy. I just, I have to get that out of my system. And, oh my god, and it went that, nowhere. It, they, it was, the, it didn't go that nowhere. Was, there was so thick you could cut it with it. I was like, just kiss! Now <laughs> kiss! Or don't! Now kiss! <laughs> <laughs> it looked like Kara was leaning in, like it looked like yeah. it was gonna, and then it didn't, but you know what? It didn't go nowhere, because... <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> but no, because he got it out there. He got it out there, it's on the table, and what he said to Kara was, I know you don't feel the same way, so let's just ignore it and go back to how things were, and Kara just didn't really sh- give an answer. So shove when- it way down deep inside like uh, normal adults and not think about our feelings again. Right, but without... Kara actually giving an answer that leaves her to sit and reflect and think about it and she'll be able to give a a better answer without shutting him down because I don't think I think if she answered that moment she would have shut him down but because he did not give her the opportunity to answer for herself she has time to think about it and I think when it comes down to it it's not going to be an immediate rejection um so I think it actually went better this way um Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna find out. We're just gonna be like, "Yeah, hey, let's give this a try," and then we're gonna find out that Monel is the prince, and he's wanted by all these alien factions, and because of all these reasons. And then Kara's gonna be like, "I hate you." Probably. Yeah. I hope it doesn't go that way. I and hope we, we she just hate him. we just got over a whole hate fest mm-hmm. this episode. I don't want to start another one. They're so stinking adorable together. Come on, can we not have that in one show, please? Well, we know we know there are hooded things looking for Monel. We Probably are assuming, Daxamites. yeah, we're assuming that they're Daxamites, and we're assuming that he's the prince. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that's gonna lead to some problems. Um, but I don't know. I thought it was absolutely adorable when Monel was just like. Your, your eyes, they were so blue, like like comets. And, but they always are. And then he started going off on another tangent, and then he just went, comets, in the middle of, <laughs> of talking, and I just I lost it. was it. so stinking adorable. I'm like, how could you... T- oh, I don't understand. I lost it. I don't I'm understand like, her. I'm like, does Kara's eyes change with emotion, or does mon just not know what tears are? That would be two shows where he didn't understand what liquid coming out of people's eyes were. Um, yeah. Because on, on the Vampire Diaries, uh, he had like some weird thing with his emotions, and then he got sad one time, and he started crying, and he goes, I don't know what this strange liquid coming out of my eyes are. And <laughs> I'm leaking! <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was fantastic. So, yeah, two shows where he doesn't understand tears? That that That's fantastic. I love it. It could be a nod to maybe, you know, maybe. You know, See, I, w- I would have reference. found that I would have found all that adorable. I just have the the feeling it's just gonna be terrible. <laughs> you are all doom and gloom. See, I don't Listen. think I don't think Cleo is on the the Chris Wood bandwagon. I think she's running no. to catch up. No, I like him. <laughs> she's chasing it. Problem. She's chasing that's after. Not she's not problem. on it yet. The problem is we're in a in a point where Kara thinks she can change him and make him something he's not, and that's that's not good. Well, and maybe well maybe this gives her her taking this time, not turning him down, to actually reflect and realize. Maybe after this, she'll actually stop and think that she can't change people, yeah. because people have been telling her straight up, uh, "Listen, we're going to do it whether you want us to or not," you know, kind of thing. 
Yeah, but mm-hmm. then she's like, I can change him, but I can't. You can't change Jimmy. It's like it's Carson. Yeah, Yo, it's Stop. very, very <laughs> hypocritical. Very hypocritical. Like, but we see her early on in the episode. The episode opened with uh, Monel and Kara, you know, doing some. Uh, uh, what was it? Crime training, crime fighting, kindergartening. Ki- and no, kindergarten. no, no. Uh, uh, superhero kindergarten. Superhero kindergarten. Superhero kindergarten. Yeah. Um, and it just you see how clumsy Monel is there, you know, and everything, and he's just clumsy through the whole episode. But that whole thing reminded me of like Men in Black with the cardboard yes! cutouts popping up. And tell know. me, why did little Susie have to die? <laughs> <laughs> You know, this, this alien over chair. here is just doing workout. He's just he's just yeah. trying to get his, his morning exercise in. As soon as he blew the head off of the, the, the little girl yeah. cardboard cutout, I was like, look what you did to little Susie. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was like. Thank you, Cleo. We're on the same wavelength. <laughs> oh, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I don't think that that's what they were intending by any means. But, I don't know. But that, yeah, that's know. definitely what I got out of it. Felt like a reference. Yeah. Um, I mean, I you know, SWAT teams when they do training, they kind of have a cut a uh, cutout thing going on too. Yeah. A big old Hogan's Alley. Yeah, thing but the little on. girl felt like a reference. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then uh, we have uh, uh, the whole you know thing with Guardian, right? And Guardian gets shot out in the field. Wind fell asleep at the keyboard. Like he's overworked. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, everything last episode, he's complaining that he had to, you know, create a suit for mon which... I can't wait to see the suit. We still haven't seen yet. I, I know when, when I know you're busy, but I really want to see the suit. Like, get it out. Because he rolls up to the fight with the, the two Livewire clones, mm-hmm. and he's got, like, the, this track suit... <laughs> <laughs> and these, like, Wesker-ass glasses. And I'm like, if you had blonde hair, you'd just be Wesker. Yeah. Yeah, for Miserable. Yeah, right? um, <clears throat> but, yeah. Um, and during, you know, the, the, the battle and everything with um, Livewire, because Livewire got out, and we'll, we'll discuss how she got out in a minute, but that's when Kara finds out that uh, James is actually Guardian, right? And does not take that very well. He, he should have told her. He should have. 100% uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, he should have, but it wouldn't have mattered. No, it would not have. You know, have and, then, you know and, then have, and then her sister knew, and Wynn knew, and that yeah. I think that just compiled uh, enough shit on top of her to give her It did, more but money. Kara still had the presence of mind to be like, you're right, it's not about you guys. Get out. Let me talk to James, you know? She didn't hold it against everybody. You see later on in the episode, she's still talking to to, uh, her sister, Alex, you know? So um, Mm -hmm. she's not holding that against them. And and that I have to respect Kara for at least, but she's still very wrong everywhere else, you know? Mm -hmm. She's not holding it against the people that were kind of forced into the uh, secret, you know? And then that was at the beginning, and then with the whole... John Jones and the White Marsh at Megon, um, him forgiving her, I think she's seeing that, and I think it might flip her a little. Yeah, well, like, this whole episode, I'm like, right from the bat, like, they're really laying on with Hank and, or John Jones and uh, Megan and having to psychically link, and he's like, but I don't forgive her, and Alex is like, well, you know, forgiveness is not about them. Forgiveness is about you. And... At that point, it's just like, okay, well, now I know how the episode's ending with Livewire. Like, I literally, <laughs> that's that was how I thought at that moment. You know, well, and also Steve wasn't Livewire even factoring in Kara and the superhero team, right? I was not even factoring mm-hmm. that in. I was specifically, because they've built up Livewire so much, you mm-hmm. know, at this point, that I'm like, that's what's going to happen with Livewire now. So the, the whole Livewire arc was not that impressive to me. Um... I was actually talking to Nikki in pre-show about it, and she like I almost forgot Livewire was in the episode. It was a little different. It was a little. Yeah. You thought, well, I was like, who is this chick and this guy getting them out? Did she make a pact with her in jail if she gets them? You know, kind of thing. So it was a little turn, a little twist. But yeah, what I was expecting now is we know Livewire controls electricity, and. We also know that the brain gives off electric signals. I was thinking that she was going to start controlling people. And I was like, ooh, that would be know, really, right? really interesting. And mm. it almost seemed like that was the route that they were going. Um, until we find this weird 
crazy scientist guy that was so insignificant that they did not even bother to name him. Yeah. And he he was like, didn't you know most scientists experiment on themselves first? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's not true because more scientists would be dead. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm surprised yeah. you're not dead. That's, that's what I'm lab like, rats and guinea pigs going, are for, you know? Yeah. I'm looking at him and going, where, what show do I know him from? Because he's been on a couple, but he always plays like a really smart like scientist guy kind mm. of thing. And I can't put my finger on it. Yeah. Typecast. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. He wants to use Livewire as some conduit for uh, some project she's, he, I mean, he's working on. And... Super soldiers. It's always super soldiers. Of course. Why is it going to be super soldiers? Of course. Always super soldiers. Because the government pays well to get the, uh, Super you know. soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> but they always call them super soldiers. It's, it doesn't matter what, if you're in the Marvel, DC. That's the generic. Like that. Yeah. It's super soldiers. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I don't know. Um, it's just generic game. It's just like I was very unimpressed with the Livewire arc. I think though that the scenes that Livewire was in were some of her best scenes um, that we've seen with her on the show yet. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I just feel like the arc of the character in this episode was just very insignificant. Um, uh -huh. It was bas It's basically served its purpose to get her out of jail. And the fact that she will return in some way later, yeah. that's that's really all it served as. You know? I disagree that it was insignificant. It was definitely overshadowed by more emotional parts of the episode. Yeah. But yeah. I think her her little, very little, emotional journey <laughs> is not insignificant. Yeah. Uh, no, in, it's, a it's... Similar, in a similar way that in Arrow we had a certain character's emotional, a certain villain's <laughs> emotional arc. I, I meant so. to this... <coughs> To the particular episode, it's insignificant. To her overall story, it's huge. Yes. Uh, yes. She definitely gets overshadowed, that's for sure. Right, it's... Because, like I said, it's setting up for her later. Um, mm -hmm. And it's almost like Kara and Livewire is like the Batman-Joker kind of vibe going on. They're like polar opposites of each other. Also, how But does... they share a common ground in similarities in so many ways. How does Clark make a nemesis look fun? Like, <laughs> I don't look at Superman and Lex Luthor and think know. fun. Like, no. doesn't, that know. doesn't look fun. No. <laughs> like, I don't know what Kara's talking about. I don't either. <laughs> Kara's a little out there anyways. You know, so. but that brings so yeah. many questions in. Like, what the hell is Lena Luthor going up to right, right now? Yeah. What, what, we haven't seen her. And at this point, you know, her so far... Sadness, it, mom. Yeah, and mm -hmm. at this point, so far into... Uh, season two, we're it's been nine episodes since we've seen Cat Grant. Do you guys miss her? Is it has it been noticeable? Not really. Yeah. Uh -huh. no. 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 Wow. There's plenty of other stuff to focus on. There's definitely yeah, a no. lot of stuff to focus on. I honestly, I really miss her though. Like I, every episode, I'm like, oh come on, just give me a little bit of Cat Grant somewhere. I, I just Dom need someone to has... help Kira. I think Dom has a. Dama has a crush. No. Mm. No. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm preoccupied. He's, he's got cat fever. I'm preoccupied no, with Chris Wood on the show. So. I was just going to say he's got a yeah. crush on Chris Wood. Yeah. Yeah. And, and plus, cat is Man too crush. much like Dom. You know. Too much Dom. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally a straight man with a man crush on, on Chris Wood. So. Just, just throwing really, it out there. He's, like a heterosexual he, life. He's, he's fantastic. He really is. Like, I just, I really admire him as an actor. I just think he's, he's absolutely great in everything he does. I haven't seen him in a bad role yet. I haven't seen that everything he's, he's done, but I have That I he's seen great him. looking. <laughs> oh God, his, his I'm smile, sure that doesn't like, help for you how, guys. How does she turn They're him hurt. down? How, how, how does she not just grab him and kiss him? How does she not do that? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but we also learned that uh, with with uh, Megan 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 it's Megan it's Megan so with Megan um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna side with I'm gonna side with Rachel on this one um, that. Uh, <laughs> Um, just because she, she screamed over everybody else. That's the only reason no, why I'm siding with I just with remembered, I just remembered the Key and Peel skit. <laughs> it's just, it's just Megan! <laughs> um, 
the you know the she had the uh, the uh, psychic attack on her, which actually was from the White Martians, which mm-hmm. is bringing them to Earth, right? So they're they're on their way now. They don't forget very easily, do they? Because it's no. been how many years? And this has happened so many years ago, and they're still coming after her after what she did. Mm-hmm. They they have a long memory. Yeah, well, they hold old. they hold a really long grudge. You know? They have a hit list. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, that's, John, he held a grudge all that mm-hmm. time, too. Well, of course. You know, and that, like we see that a lot with him in this episode and, and how he has to kind of let come go to terms and, and, yeah, come to terms with everything. And, and when he finally does merge with uh, uh, Megan and uh, they they do their, like, what, what did they call that? The, the, the bond. The bond. The yeah. bond. When, when they, the they finally... When they finally bond, we get to see this like kind of Martian flashback. I mean, it's not exactly what happened, but it, it, it's she's she's set in there and she's remembering and you know uh, John Jones. That's sees... like a Marsh- Martian concentration camp. That's what it looks like. Yeah, but he sees that she was telling the truth. She was not lying about it. She she protected the Green Martians. Uh, she turned on her people. So mm-hmm. this is someone he can trust. So moving forward, I don't see her locked up anymore. No, she's not. Well, he, he says she's go. Yeah, yeah. Then he says she's free. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just saying, like, I don't and see her, him ever retracting that. Like, she's she's free. Yeah. That's it. Like, they're they're oh. friends. Yeah. But here's the problem. He let her go. He came to terms. He forgave her. Super proud of him. He didn't apologize for locking her up for just being a white for racist reasons. Actually, for just being a white Martian. It's literally right. the only reason he locked her up. Right. He didn't mm-hmm. apologize. I got nope. mad. Oh yeah. You didn't apologize. I'm not really I'm mad. Like, Sean, you apologized to McGon. Yeah. I mean asshole. It would be nice if he did, but at the same time, I think she understood why he did it. I mean, even though it wasn't fair, she understood. It wasn't a good thing to do, but she understood and she just kinda took it as I yeah. mean, after I being... the other problem is she thinks she deserves it. Yeah. 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 She thought she deserved death too back on Mars, so Right. And like the whole thing is it's very blatantly racism uh but i think it's more easy for everyone to overlook because it's species yeah they're um, not human and yeah. i don't it, it's some weird fine line territory right there um because we could say the exact same thing about the dominators you know like we've not seen the dominators do anything but bad so we instantly dislike them right off right mm-hmm. out the gate but that's not to say that every dominator you know is that's is true. evil you know that's true but we also don't know what the dominators want and we don't know what the white martians species. want they want to kill her right they... that's, that's all we know right now oh uh, but they did literally commit genocide so yeah but mm. but was it we don't know the reason we don't know if the the Green Martians did something to them first. We don't know what the the whole story. I don't is. think there's ever going to be a a a. Here's the definitive who started Correct. the wars between Correct. white and, and Green Martians. We're not going to get that. Right. But starting a fight and the other side ending it in genocide, you know. Oh, mm-hmm. I know. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So. Germany. <laughs> It's really Nazis. <laughs> it's really a rough. It's it's really rough territory, and uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that they're covering it at all, like on the show. So oh, look what's happening in our world today. I know, I know. The everything is in chaos, um, and they're covering it in a way here where it doesn't get very political, and no. that that is kind of the breath of fresh air of all of it. Um, but. Like I said, we're also only seeing one side of everything. So, mm. it's kind of rough. But, I don't know. They're they're going to be coming. Um, I know that they're coming directly to the DEO uh, next episode. But, uh... Only way to contain them. Yeah. And it's going to look... It looks like the movie Alien. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. the way it was shot, they're all... All the lights are out. Like, they're all trapped in the, in the compound. I'm like, this is like Alien. Yep. Yep. Uh, next episode is called The Martian Chronicles. 
Uh, white Martians attack the DEO. Armek, a white Martian, descends on National City, intent on taking Megan back to... I'm sorry, Megan, back to uh, Mars to face punishment as a traitor. Hank and Supergirl determine the best way to keep Megan safe is to bring her to the DEO. However, when it is revealed that Armek shapeshifted into uh, Megan and is now on the loose in the building, the team realize he could be disguised as any one of them. Hmm. Oh. So... Yep, it's gonna get interesting. I love when they do that whole like murder mystery kind of like who's the villain, you know? Like we've seen that on a. I think Supergirl actually did that uh, earlier last season, um, somewhere where someone was shape shifting and we didn't know if they were shape. I think it was John Jones was shape shifting into a few different people, and we didn't know if he was right. Am I wrong about that? I know he shape shifted into Supergirl a few times, but. Um, yeah, but That's I know like um, but, yeah. on Supernatural you had that that one with the parasite with the worm that they had to shock out of people and stuff like that and it kept and you didn't know if one of them had it in them and everybody was like mm. all I love when they do kind of stuff like that like you don't know who you could trust yeah so, yeah you know I really really like that so uh, yeah you guys have anything else uh, for this no before we wrap it up no. I know they better do the whole love thing better. Better. And I don't want a love triangle, and I don't want it to turn to shit. I want an actual nice, you know, something nice for once. It seems like if they're going, know, if they're going to do happen. it, they need to do it. Yeah, and it seems like Manel has a lot of romantic potential for Kara, just because he is a sweetheart when he wants to be. So. I think in his heart of hearts, he is. He just doesn't know how to go about it. Just yeah. because he, you know, he hasn't been here long. He doesn't know the customs, I guess. And they come from different planets, so the way that they go about suiting and wooing each other is yeah. totally different. <laughs> so. <laughs> yep. and he's probably, if he is the prince, he's probably used to getting all, everything he wanted. So it's going to be a yeah. little different. Yeah. Not used to working for the girls. Mm-hmm. They yeah. come to him. Uh, yeah, so. Brian in chat says, "I still still think Monel is going to become Superboy, and I think that's our hope. He might. That, that we're all he hoping might. he we gets there. Uh, it we depends don't. on what Win I think does with this costume. If he's going to hold the House of L logo or not. Um, yeah. Which I don't know if he'll include it. Still really bothers me that they're calling the him Mon L when he's not part of the House of L. You know, so." That, mm. Didn't they give him a human name? Was his name Michael? He might, honestly, he might be making up his name too. Yeah, because yeah. he didn't give Kara his name until he heard her saying. Maybe it's just like in a panic, he just said L, like mm -hmm. by accident. Yeah. Like, well, oh, I know shit. in the comics they originally thought that it was their cousin, or mm -hmm. or something like that. Was it? I forget now. Something like that. Yeah. Something like Some that. relative. Yeah. They thought he was a relative, and they had him under the House of L, and they named him Mon because he was literally found on a Monday. That that's how Mon L came to be. Yeah, and um, <laughs> and then it ended up being he wasn't related to them. Um, the you know so they haven't gone that route. So the other route that they could go is that they completely flip the script and actually have him related. And that would be really awkward for the love Can triangle we not? that's going on with Kara. No, no, I mm -hmm. would riot. I would go down there and we'd like have a, we'd have a Luke Skywalker Princess Leia situation all no, over again. No, 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 no. no. Stop it! Just stop it. No. So and that only happened because Lucas didn't know his story before he fucking wrote it. So <laughs> and she was just trying to make Han jealous anyway. So you know, with her own brother. And on that note, you know that at the time. Nikki, where can the people time. find you? Don't you? They can find me on Twitter at Lady Venom Twenty Four, L A D Y V E N O M Twenty Four. Excellent, Cleo. Where can the people find you? You can find me at Cleo Moto on Twitter, Twitch, and Pinterest. Excellent, Rachel. Where can the people find you? They can find me at Savannah Seventeen at Twitter. You can find me down below at Phenomenon. P H E N O M E D O M. Phenomenon. 
You can find us all and more on Facebook, Gmail, G+, Twitter, MySpace, and right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, games, and movies. Until next time, see you guys later. Yeah, but the creepy part is, Cleo, in Return of the Jedi, Princess Leia goes, he's my brother. I've, I've always known that. She said somehow. She's always known it, kind of. She didn't know for sure. That's that's <laughs> the creepy part, despite how it how yeah. it came to be. Yeah.